In the previous episode, we built an algorithm that fills the faces, but quickly ran into a problem. The triangles render in the same order, creating overlaps in the shape. So today we're gonna fix this. It's the final step of making our 3D engine, and once we're done, we'll have the freedom to do anything we want basically. So if you're ready, let's dive right into Scratch. We're going to start with a little tidy up of the scripts. Currently, we have to add each triangle manually, which is obviously a tedious thing to do, given we're gonna have so many of them later on. All this monstrosity could be compiled in a single list. Let's call it unit cube and fill it in like this. Now don't worry, you don't need to copy this by hand. Instead, just download the file from the description and import it right here. Now you can just delete all of this and it becomes a lot more organized. The list has six items that represent the six faces of the cube. The triplets of ones and zeros are the XYZ coordinates of each corner and the last two digits show the brightness of the face. Each face has four points, so let's create a fourth set of coordinates, X4, Y4, Z4, a set point block for them and a rotation matrix, just like for the previous three points. And finally, as part of our tidy up, create a block called init for storing all constant values, a render level block, and a broadcast called tick in the forever loop. That alone makes your game look professional. Anyway, now it's time to actually draw the cube. Firstly, we want to transfer all these values to the corresponding points. So here for example, x1 will be set to letter 1 of the string, y1 to letter 2 of the string, and so on. Next we want to process these points, so take out this chunk from the fill tribe block and place it over here, making sure to replace all pink inputs with the respective orange variables, and the opposite thing in the fill tribe block. Now we need something to store these values. Create 9 lists for the position, and another one for the brightness, then make a new block called init lists to reset them at the start. And afterwards, we'll draw two triangles that make up this face. The first one with points 1, 2 and 3, and the second one with points 1, 4 and 3. Because both of these triangles share points 1 and 3, we can add them twice to our lists. As for the other two points, we'll first add point 2, then point 4. The brightness will be the last two letters of the string. And to add some texture, let's change it up slightly for the second triangle, and set the corresponding brightness in the fill tribe block. All that's left to do is to cycle through each of our items using this tally counter that simply fills the triangles using our data. But that's just for item 1. We want it done for the whole cube. So repeat 6 times and use the same tally counter to go through each side one by one. This is what the final code should look like. And if you've done everything correctly, then you should see a full cube. So now we have a lot more triangles, but still the same problem with overlap. And to fix it, we're gonna use depth sorting. This means instead of drawing triangles in a predefined order, we're gonna arrange them based on their z distance to the player and render them in this order so closer triangles would overlap the farther ones. Basically, we're not gonna draw the triangle straight away, so take this part out and make a new block for it called depth sorting. The first step is finding the distance from the camera to each face. A good estimate would be the average value of the face's z positions. So create a new variable, call it d, and set it to the sum of z positions divided by 4. Also, don't forget to add Z clipping here. That's if any of our points cross the near clipping plane, then the face will not be drawn. But then to keep track of all our distances, let's create a list, name it D as well, and a new variable, place number. We're gonna change the place number by one until our distance is greater than the previous item. This is known as insertion sort, which is used in many other games as well. Now that we found the place, we wanna assign it all of its data, so the position and brightness of the two triangles. So replace all the add blocks with the insert blocks, and don't forget D is also here. Then go back to init lists and add an empty item to each of them. For D we also clear it and add a very big number. This is done for safety, just so the insertion sort has something to work from. Now just set the tally to 2, and that's it. The cube is rendering in the correct order. In the next episode, we'll be finally adding the player, so be sure to subscribe to not miss it out. See ya!